Hey guys, Down Phoenix here, and welcome back to what I'm playing. Today we're checking out Pilots of Darcelon, which is a new game that's recently came out on Steam. I was sent a review key by Dr. Cucho Games, who is the developer of the game, and this game has a tagline, a hidden tagline. I don't think they actually said this, but simplicity is key, and that's kind of the premise of this game. This is a very simple, basic game, very arcade-like. It's all about getting high scores and all about mastering its very simple mechanics in order to be an expert at the game because this is a game that pretty much anybody can pick up and play. Very simple in execution, but it's also very easy to separate the master from the novice in this game because it is a very challenging arcadey romp that uses the forces of physics and inertia in order to kind of separate skill levels of this game. So if you're really good with this stuff, if you're really fast on your feet and fast on your head, then you will definitely get a kick out of this game. And if not, well, at least you'll kind of get some good laughs here, because it's a tough one for sure, guys. So, this game is most similar to games like Lunar Lander and Solar Jetman and games of that type, games from the 80s and early 90s that use these kinds of mechanics. I mean, Lunar Lander is a classic. It's all about just trying to land your shuttle and not crash very basic premise. This was a very popular game during the 80s. And yet, it's a very hard game. It's not a game that you're going to be able to pick up and play on a high level. Like, it's definitely going to take practice, it's going to take patience, and it's going to take a lot of learning. You have to learn the mechanics of the game in order to actually become a master of it. Pilots of Darcelon does that very well in my opinion because it has a very fluid model of physics. The inertia feels very responsive. And at the same time, you often feel helpless in various situations. So you just have a couple of buttons. You have one button, of course, to fire your lasers, which sound very suspiciously like sound effects from a popular movie franchise that I totally forgot the name of. And you have a button that has a context change between a shield, which of course will protect you from the laser blasts of turrets and things like that, and as well as protect you from taking damage if you hit a wall. And a beam, which the beam is used to grab this cargo, as you see I'm dragging here. Uh, that's the objective of the game, essentially is to get to the cargo and then take it to the drop-off point in order to progress to the next stage. It's a very simple premise, uh, very, very simple. But going through the stages, there will be an increased level of complexity in navigating the levels, as well as the challenges that you're going to face, and so much more. So even though it's a very simple premise, this game is anything but easy. Uh, fortunately, there are a lot of difficulty settings, so if you are a total noob at video games, you can definitely play one of the lower difficulty settings and still have a relatively good time with this game. But if you really want the ultimate challenge, there are numerous higher difficulties, including the maximum difficulty setting, which doesn't allow for any checkpoints mid-level. So if you mess up, you have to start the level all over again from the very beginning and some of the later levels have multiple points that you have to go through you have to go through multiple enemy turrets and navigate winding mazes to get to the cargo go through all kinds of obstacles and so much more in order to complete that you also have a worldwide leaderboard that you can really sink your teeth into you know maximize your scoring potential and hop on the leaderboard. Right now, at least, I'm on the leaderboard. I think uh, last time I checked, I was like rank 11 or 12. 
But uh, that's probably not going to last long once more people start picking up on this game. I don't think a lot of people really realize about this game yet. But I want to do my video to kind of get this on people's radar because I really enjoyed my time with it. I wasn't sure what to think about this game. You know, I thought that this game, you know, it had a really cool little aesthetic and whatnot. But I thought it was going to be kind of a throwaway game. You know, I thought it was just going to be like, eh, it's all right. Uh, janky and all this stuff. No, it's not like that at all. It actually plays really nice. I really appreciated the physics and the way everything works. And I learned a lot playing this game, despite its very simple premise and execution. You know, I learned how to deal with the physics and the inertia going through these levels, you know, coming up with challenges, having to manage when to use my shields, because your shields, of course, when you use those, you're going to burn up your fuel. And you can't use your shields while you're carrying the cargo because you're going to drop the cargo because it's the same button that you use to beam it up. So it's a bad idea to use a shield in the middle of a fight while carrying the cargo. So you have to kind of manage how you're going to go through those scenarios. So it's, it's just a really cool little game. I really like the retro aesthetic. Um... Uh, it's kind of a mix of something you'd expect from the Amiga uh, with like a Commodore 64. Um, definitely has kind of a weird meshed look of both of those systems. Like the color palettes kind of remind me more of a Commodore, but with the way, you know, the, with the resolution and everything like that, that's definitely more in the Amiga territory in my opinion. Um, so yeah, it's just a really cool game. I dug the music and the sound effects, even the uh, copyright infringing ones, <laughs> uh, with the laser blast specifically. But I digress, you know, this is a really fun little game. Uh, it's only available on Steam, and I'm sure you can probably get a DRM free too. I'll have to make sure on that. I'll link in the description below uh, for links to check this game out. But um, yeah, this is a game that definitely, it, it's not really a game that you're going to play over and over and over, but. You're going to kind of enjoy it when you're playing through it. You have numerous stages that you go through. Unfortunately, there's not a level select stage. I would have really liked the ability to kind of choose specific levels to kind of practice them and get better. Um, this game doesn't really have that, at least right now. You have to play from start to finish. It does save your progress, though. So if you end in the middle of a game, you can go back to the same level that you stopped at to kind of resume your session. Uh, but once you beat the game, you'll have to start over. Uh, the game does, of course, track your high scores, though. So whatever your highest score overall, it will keep that on the leaderboard. So you can see how you match up with the other players of this game. And uh, try to improve things. And, you know, for people that are interested in the achievements and things like that, you know, there are uh, numerous achievements you can get. So it'll give you kind of more incentive to continue playing this game. But... Uh, yeah, Pilots of Darcelon, I did not expect as much as I got from this game. And I'm really glad that Dr. Cucho reached out to me and uh, sent me a review key. You know, I'm definitely going to be checking this game out a little bit more and what a disaster that almost was. <laughs> wow. Um, it literally blew up the split second after I completed the stage. I, that would have been a loss. So, but... This game's a good time, guys. I really appreciate it. And um, next week, we're going to be checking out a game that's pretty much on the opposite end of the spectrum. A game where simplicity is not key, but very complicated mechanics and storylines and characters are the key. And there is a lot of controversy involving this game series. So we'll see you next week. Uh, but till then, down Phoenix out.